Hey everybody, it's Troll Pal Chuck, and I'm back with another review. And today we're taking a look at from the Transformers Studio Series 86 subline. This is Voyager Class Ironhide. Yes, that's right, I said Voyager Class Ironhide. A somewhat cool figure and a retail release of Ironhide, which, to be honest, we actually haven't gotten since Siege. Um, so, you know, as we know that the Earthrise version of Ironhide, as well as Ratchet, were uh, store exclusives that were somewhat hard to find. And uh, for a lot of people, they missed out on that version of the mold, so this is going to be a way for them to have a vintage G1 accurate Ironhide. Now, this figure does isn't without some controversy to it, which, to be honest, most of it I will be discussing later on in a short that I will be making. I've, you know, been coming up with a script in my head and stuff like that. So be on the lookout for that, and be sure to check out the rest of my shorts. We are starting off in van mode. And uh, let me just say right off the bat, uh, through the camera, the color matching of the plastic does seem a little bit off. Basically what you have is the darkest red is all clear plastic that has been painted red. Um, you know, uh, uh, except up here in the front, it does look like that it's actually um, two-piece plastic here, so that's pretty good. But here on the sides and all that, um, this section of the back, which forms the feet, actually is matches nicely with that. Whereas this lighter red, I think, tends to match more with the bonnet cover here. So... There is that, but like I said, it is much less noticeable in person than it is through the camera. But then again, your mileage may vary. Um, other than that, we do have weapon storage. You can store the blasters for in the vehicle mode. Uh, underneath here, they will form exhaust for the van of sorts. You can also, if you do choose... Um, on this section up here, which will definitely be where the light bar for Ratchet goes, you can pop these on just like that and have some sort of attack mode. This is one. This, this van is all one piece. You don't have the top removing to have a sled or shield. The blasters, of course, are based on that classic G1 design that both Ironhide and Ratchet used and also is indicative of the Masterpiece figure. Now, this is, I would say this is not a Masterpiece breaker, but if you did miss out on getting that Masterpiece figure, I think it does go for a couple hundred dollars now on the secondary market, so this is a good stand-in. Rolls rather nicely. Um, not a lot of the robot kibble underneath, although you do have the hips there. Um, I'm happy with it, and quick check of the box... I do not see any licensing, so this is not licensed by Nissan. So, how about we pause, and we'll come back with the transformation. Alright, transformation is rather straightforward, and I would say not that difficult. In fact, the first part of the transformation is the most difficult, as well as it's also the last part when going to robot to vehicle mode. And that's basically separating the front half here from... Uh, the rest of the uh, robot. And basically, what I found to do is if you try splitting the back first and then getting a thumbnail in, this will help on pulling back. And you will see what the problem is in just a second as I... There we go. Wiggle, jiggle, free. Let's uh, get these panels out of the uh, way. Bring that back. You want to fold these panels back just like so, and then bring that down, and then tab it in. Do it again on this side. This lower panel comes back. It will tab into place, and then this will tab into place as well. There's the tab. There's the slot. There you go. And we can go ahead and you know separate um, the legs from this forearm section and this is basically uh, what the issue is um, right there this is all clear plastic you have a clear plastic hook on each side that is supposed to grip on hook in to like the lip here of this clear plastic hinge 
it is not a question of if, but a question of when this will break. And that's just the, and that's just a matter of fact. Um, now that we've separated the back a little, go ahead, flip the fists out, straighten out the arms, and we can get to, that's just to give you some room to get your hands in, and let's get to work on the bottom of the vehicle. Go ahead, flip these panels up, and then what you want to do now is take this top section and according it, it out, flipping that panel up and in, and then flip that panel on top to form the feet. Let's do that again on this side. And you're basically bringing it down and in like that, and those will form the feet. Close these panels here to close off the legs, and you do have the robot standing. Uh, now to move along, what you want to do is detach the front end of the vehicle from the waist section, bringing it down slightly. As you do that, go ahead and bring down this front section, which probably by now would have loosened up. And then you can go ahead and rotate the whole section around, as we've seen on the Siege and Earthrise releases. Once you've done that, go ahead and bring the front section, this section back up into position, snapping it into place. Coming around the back, you can go ahead and um, separate the arms. When going to vehicle mode, make sure when you're folding the arms up, you're doing it on these red panels, and that the actual arm, which has its own independent armpit joint, is sitting flush. So bring those down, just like so. Um, you can go ahead and bring this section up. It's a little confusing as to how this section should, could, should sit because in the instructions and in the photo, photography of the toy, which is really just CAD designs, um, this, you really don't see this part uh, peeking out over the head. But really, uh, in terms of you, you want just getting everything to fold up you know, on those hinges and joints, that's about it. I mean can't really get it in much farther or down plus for the weapon storage it just it does show the guns angling out somewhat so unless i'm missing something which i don't think i am because I mean, that looks a little silly and you can close it up it does stay back there it would be would have been nice if there was like another hinge or some way to fold this all the way down but i understand why they didn't do it bring the arms down to the side open up this front section and again just a little note this really does not stay closed and flush until the end when you have everything pegged together and you have all that friction holding it in so open up that panel fold these side panels in and again clear plastic with a pin this i think will be the one of the first things to go besides that um the hook joint at the end that latches into it Reach in here and bring up Ironhide's head, just like so. Nice looking head there. Fold this panel in and then close it up. It will snap into place. And there we have Ironhide in its robot mode. And make sure everything's make sure everything's pegged in. Ooh, pegged in tight. And this, oh, this for whatever reason does not seem to want to uh, peg in. So, that's interesting. Hmm. Yeah, there we go. Uh, and like I said, you know, that back panel, I mean, you can fold it down if you want. Fold it, you know, somewhat up, like, out like that. But I really think it is meant to sit up like so. Articulation. Iron Heights head is on a ball joint. I do find that the ball joint a little tight in some when you're turning it in some positions. And on mine, I did actually think have to have to pop some paint or glue, which actually started to cause the face to separate the front part of the the shell of the face to pop off. But I squeezed it back on, so th so there's no gapage. But see some gapage there. That might be it. But I think that's just mine. Uh, like I said, we do have that armpit joint there, so that is nice with that detailing. 90 degree bend at the elbow. 
wrist articulation, bicep swivel, um, nice hip joints there. And I do appreciate this little waist skirt here that is very, that is actually animation accurate. Swivel, uh, knee bend, and of course, ankle pivot. And you do have some, because of the transformation, a good deal of foot articulation and all that jazz. So, um, I am not a fan of these panels here on the side of the leg. It just, just doesn't seem to like really work for me. Uh, you do have weapon storage. Now, the instructions show you storing the blasters up. I found that you can store them down. Just uh, uh, peg them in. I like to do it with, like, the um, handles facing out. Oh, I mean, it's not the best. It's... A little fidgety, but there you go. So you have them stored like that. But as I said, the instructions show the uh, uh, the, the barrels pointing up. But I'm like, eh, that's a little overly aggressive. It, um, there is also storage on the back of the legs, which I find kind of interesting it's actually using the same posts on from uh vehicle mode so we pull these off and this you might enjoy a little bit better these i think these hide a little bit better than than the uh on the uh back i mean depending but there's that so, you do have some options. And, of course, the figure can hold the guns in the hand. I'm not sure if he actually used uh, the blasters in the film. I mean, you, do, you did have that one scene where he gets taken out by Megatron only to reach up and then have his head blown in, but there is that. But... I do appreciate the head here, and I'm not sure if it's coming out on the camera. Nice, uh, deep blue eyes, but, you know, you do have that. So, nice figure. Now, this is being sold at the Voyager price point, and whereas with Override, which is the Voyager and the Velocitron line, I do not really see the price point there, especially with the fact that we know that figure was made with less runners than the average uh, Voyager figure. There is a heft to Ironhide, but weight should not factor into a Voyager alone. So we were told that Ironhide's a Voyager due to complexity of the parts and its transformation. I do not find this to be as complicated or more complicated than, say, Voyager Hot Rod, which was a larger, which was a larger deluxe figure, but not Voyager size, but it did come with a lot more accessories. This is actually smaller than, I believe, the Earthrise and Siege mold of Ironhide and Ratchet. So there is that, and I'm not sure how that scales with other figures in the Studio Series 86 line, since, well, um, he never, I think of the figures that have been released thus far, uh, in terms of the Autobots, um, Ironhide didn't interact with. In fact, out of all the figures, the only one that he, he sort of uh, interacted with was Starscream, which was that leader class figure, which was, again, the Voyager released with extra parts. And that was from a distance where he was... Um, Starscream was mowing down the Autobots with Megatron. Which, here's a thought. Why didn't they include a Megatron pistol with that Starscream? Hmm. Anyway, so again, I don't know how accurate this size is. It's a fun figure. I like the transformation. It does get a little frustrating going to vehicle mode, as I mentioned, bringing that section together. I am very concerned 
about breakage over time with all of the clear plastic here and the pins worked in. Hopefully that was something that um, Hasbro took into account and that this is like a better clear plastic. Not sure about that. Um, I really don't hope we end up getting a um, buzzworthy re-release like we did with Cup because I'm not sure if I want to spend the Voyager price point again uh, to get a figure with solid plastic that's not really a Voyager size. So we'll pause and we'll come back with my final thoughts. I got this figure from Toyarena.com. They were the first online retailer that I knew of that actually had the figure in stock ready to ship. Apparently, Deep Discount has started shipping out pre-orders of the figure, and it has been found in brick-and-mortar retail at Target's in the New York area. I really hope it's not my local Target since I was there the middle of la uh, on, like, Tuesday or Thursday of last week. Uh... And I'd be kind of bummed if it was showed up later on. But I like this figure. I really do. But I think we have to keep in mind what we're getting. This is not a Voyager class figure. I do not feel that there's a complexity of parts to it. I do not feel that the transformation is overly involved. In fact, I find it rather simple. More, uh, I find it simpler than um, Hot Rod from Wave 1. Um, but I will say in terms of mass and density, there, there is a heft to it that override doesn't have. Um, and in that regard, I feel a little more comfortable calling this a Voyager class figure. Unfortunately, I don't think heft and mass should be the sole deciding factor of what makes a Voyager deluxe or leader. Um... I have many theories why this figure was released as, as a Voyager. Um, it's possible that they, on, they only had space f for a Voyager and decided to just throw Ironhide in. It would have been nice if they threw in um, some extra parts like they did with Hot Rod. Maybe they wouldn't be accurate to the movie, but at this point, we're a year and 12 months, uh, excuse me, a year and two months removed from the anniversary date, does it really matter anymore? If uh, there there's accessories that are accurate to the character but not accurate to the movie, um, I appreciate the backdrop. Obviously, it's that nice uh, the the bridge of the ship, which we kind of knew it was going to happen. I think this is a an enlarged and detailed version than the one that came with Core Ratchet. Which, by the way, we do know we will be getting a, a version of Ratchet at mainline retail, which will be a repaint with a new head of this mold. Which, again, I really am happy about, that we're getting Ironhide and Ratchet at retail for those people who missed out on the Siege and Earthrise versions. Especially when it comes to Ratchet, since I think that was that Siege release, which was a Walgreens exclusive, was the best use of the mold. Um, that's about it for the review. If you like this review, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. I say this in every video, but 98% of you who watch my videos are not subscribed, and that you're missing out, and it really affects the algorithms of the channel. So please subscribe. It really helps to promote the channel and allows, and promoting the channel and helping the channel grow allows me to do more interesting and fun things with you. Um, as time goes on, we have are in a bit of an inflation, uh, not crisis, but a period of inflation where prices are going up and I might have to start condensing on what figures, what lines I can purchase to review for you. But helping the channel grow um, and subscribing and, you know, promoting it brings in a little more that I can maybe offset some of that. Other than that, this is your old pal Chuck for Ironhide. We will see you next time. And you know, I just had the thought, shouldn't his head be removable 
accurate to the film. 